So it started with a missing IAM key. Now an IAM key is an AWS identity and access management key. And, and those aren't, aren't things you lose. You don't, you don't leave them in your door. They're not, they're not physical keys. And so the fact that one of our AWS keys is missing is perhaps a cause for alarm. So let me back up a little bit and tell you, tell you a little bit about context here. So uh, uh, my name is Paul Bigger. I'm the CTO of a company called Dark. Uh, Dark, uh, darklang.com, makes it easier uh, to code. Our goal is making it 100 times easier to code. And we are a programming language, an editor, and an infrastructure um, that attempts to take all of the accidental complexity from coding. But the we in this story uh, is CircleCI. So I was, the, I was the CEO and founder of CircleCI. Uh, and five years ago, when, 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 when this happened, um, I, was, I was in charge. Uh, I should point out that the current CEO of CircleCI would like me to point out that I do not work there, I do not speak for CircleCI, and I'm not a company representative. So bear that in mind. Um, so five years ago, uh, I'm in this building. Uh, CircleCI was, is, is a heavy bit company. We were, we were two floors up. Um, when we had the almost company-ending event, the, the scary event uh, of our first major and, and our biggest uh, security incident. And it all started with a missing IAM key. So we, we looked for all the places the IAM key could have gone. There was no scripts running. Uh, there's, you know, no one got drunk and, and went to the dashboard and deleted it. Uh, so we treated this as, as you might, as a, this is a fully fledged uh, security incident. This is, this is a scary moment. So we, we took uh, every single uh, key that we had, every single uh, vendor that we used, uh, and we, we cycled them. Uh, standard security policy. Uh, and it, it takes about 24 hours to, 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 to do that. There's a lot of keys. Uh, and we're, we're looking for like, you know, how could this have gone wrong? And coincidentally, we got an email from our hosted database provider, MongoHQ, saying, oh, we've, we've had a security incident. But, but don't worry, you weren't affected. So, so it's Tuesday at 2 p.m. Uh, we've been looking since Monday. Uh, and we think that maybe there's a bit of a coincidence here that we got this email. And so we got on the phone with them. And this is five years ago. I don't remember all the details. So I'm filling in the narrative a bit. So let's say we got on the phone with them. Uh, and they told us that, uh, oh, uh, actually, you were affected. Um, and your database was accessed by the attackers uh, two days ago. So, so it's been two days. Uh, and we, we saw some other you know, blogs that came out, uh, people reporting their security incidents. Buffer was affected. Intercom was affected. Um, and uh, we have a lot of important data in our database, as, as do you all. So we had, we had user accounts. We had things like build logs and you know, notifications and things that aren't that important. But so CircleCI makes continuous integration and continuous delivery. So we run your builds. So we have all the things that we need to run your builds, such as the important keys to run your deploys. We have uh, Heroku access keys and SSH keys for all of our customers. We had like 1,000 customers at this point. Uh, we have access tokens and SSH keys for GitHub, so access to all of your repositories. Um, and things like AWS and Stripe and, and, and other keys that, that you might just have as part of your build. So the amount of, of data we have is, is, is terrifying, the amount of the access we have. And, and what's really you know, one of the scariest things about this for me is, is things that were leveraged to get here. So MongoHQ got compromised, and so we got compromised. But MongoHQ got compromised because Adobe got compromised. An executive uh, from MongoHQ was using the same password that was in the Adobe password breach. If there's one lesson from this, it's go home and make sure that you're not using the same password for any one of your work accounts as any other account at all, and make sure that everyone else in your company is also not doing that. Uh, but Adobe got hacked, so MongoHQ got hacked, so Circle got hacked, and then, and then what's next? So we're terrified of this. We have, we have very important customers. We're like, one example that was publicly known is that Stripe was our customer at the time. That's, there's a lot of payment stuff that, that goes beyond that. Um, so we made a pretty quick decision. Uh, it was 5 p.m. we got off, off the phone. And we, we just turned everything off. We turned off every one 
of our machines, we turned off our builds. I don't even remember if we let like the running builds finish. I think we just like turned every machine off. Um, and that was possibly a company ending move, possibly a career ending move. I had no idea at the time how this was gonna how this was gonna turn out. Uh, so we turned it off. And now we, we know we need to tell customers, we know we need to bring it back up, we need to know, we know we need to do like a, a security review and make sure everything is okay. But you know, this, this isn't exactly our first rodeo, but it's one of our first rodeos. And this is a bigger rodeo than any of us had ever been in before. And we didn't really know how to, how to deal with that. And in probably the, the largest bit of luck I've ever had in my entire life, there was a guy in this building, in, in Heavybit at the time, he's one of the, the Heavybit partners. He's a guy called Jesse Robbins. And Jesse Robbins is the, is the CEO uh, of Orion. Uh, he was previously the CEO of Chef. And before that, he had the, the title, I'm not sure if it's an actual title or just a nickname, but it was, it was Master of Disaster uh, at a company you might have heard of called Amazon.com. And he had sat through and been in charge of and all that sort of thing, 35 separate security incidents. This was literally the most qualified human being on the planet to help us solve our problem. So we got very lucky. Um, and here's, here's what Jesse told us to do. So this is, he literally went on the whiteboard, uh, and I'm not expecting you to read this, I'm gonna tell you what it says. Uh, and he, he told us what to do. So on, on the right, we see a circle, that, that is a clock face. And every 15 minutes, I'm to check in with the team and see what the team has discovered. And every 30 minutes, at zero past the hour and at 30 past the hour, we are to update customers. Great, I know what to do. On the left, Jesse pointed out that we need an incident commander. That's me, Paul. Um, and this is very good because I, I, was, I was a big proponent, uh, I think lots of us were in, in around the 2013 mark, uh, of, uh, of flat organizational structures. And so I hadn't really got a handle of this whole being in charge thing. So the fact that someone else came in and said, no, 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 you, you are in charge, okay, extremely useful. And he also laid out uh, the order of our priorities. So number one priority, safety of customers. Number two priority, communicate with customers. Number three priority, recovery of service. I think a reasonable person could have put those in a different order, uh, especially under the uh, pressure and time constraints of the potential company ending situation. Uh, so I was very happy to have those, those in order. Um, if, if this is ever gonna happen to you, I would, I would memorize them, maybe put it on the index card in your pocket in case this ever happens. And, and the last thing he said is uh, to make sure that uh, we log everything, that we go slow, uh, and that we code review and communicate. And his point there is if we're going to bring our site back up, if we're going to like, you know, do all the things that we need to do in, in, in order to, to save our, our, our business and, and do the right thing for our customers and, and all that, we can't be making quick, bad decisions. You, you can't just upload you know, whatever code is, is, is on your computer now because like, you know, I have to do this now, I have to fix it. Um, so we set up a, a Slack channel. Um, this was pre-Slack, it was a hip chat channel. Uh, where all of our communications went. Every single communication uh, that we had about this went in that chat room, which came extremely uh, useful the next day when I had to write a, uh, a blog post uh, that detailed exactly what had happened and all the steps that, that, that we did to, uh, to fix it and, and remediate this, and I had exact timestamps of all the things that, that, that had happened. Um, so one of the things that we had to do uh, was we had all of these customer keys. What are we going to do uh, with all these, these AWS keys, the GitHub keys, the Heroku keys? Uh, and so what we did was we contacted those companies, we contacted GitHub, uh, and we said, GitHub, we have a security incident, an active, ongoing security incident, uh, and all of these keys are potentially compromised. And th th there's a fairly obvious thing that, that, that we wanted to do here, which is delete all the keys. Uh, but th they're not our keys, right? They're, they're our customers' keys. Uh, and we don't know if they're using them for, for other stuff. They, they shouldn't be using them for other stuff, but you know, people are people. Uh, so they're probably using them for other stuff. So we don't really have uh, any sort of like moral authority to delete all the keys, but it's definitely the right thing for our customers that these keys be deleted. Um, fortunately, uh, GitHub and Heroku and AWS and, and, and so on uh, took this off of our hands. Uh, we sent them the keys and, and they deleted it. It you know, takes an hour or two to, to delete all those keys. So we're a couple of hours in and 
we had like most of the security things dealt with. We changed all, we cycled all of our own keys. We checked our, our own things for uh, for intrusion logs, um, and then of course it's time to to start the system back up. Uh, all all the meanwhile, basically what I'm doing the whole time is is emailing customers who who have emailed me and replying to customers and tweeting things and you know generally giving people uh, a, an update throughout the night. But it's it's night at the moment. It's it's this happened literally five years ago tonight. Um, and it's, it's the middle of the night, and most of our customers don't really work in the middle of the night. We're, most of our customers were in San Francisco, or in, 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 in this uh, time zone at least. Uh, we had some uh, European customers who were starting to complain, um, but we're a couple of hours from our, uh, the, va the bulk of our, uh, of our people coming back up, and we have not turned on the system in two years. We, we had turned the whole system on two years ago, um, and then we turned it all, we turned it all off, and I don't know. Have, has we spun it up and we spun it down and we scaled it, but we had not restarted it ever. Uh, I don't know how they did that. Sorry, but it happened. Uh, it came back up, um, and the next day we wrote a very transparent blog post. Uh, the whole time we were as transparent as possible. Our, our customers, our developers, developers like transparency, and we talked to a couple of. Um, uh, of PR people who dealt with like incident response and that sort of thing, and they had advised us to be vague uh, and like to you know avoid legal liability and and and, and all that sort of thing, uh, and and we we decided not to do that. We decided to lay out everything, exact timestamps for when when something happened, just do our best and be as transparent as humanly possible uh, with our customers, and the outcome was we lost almost no customers. We we lost two large customers. We lost $1,000 in MRR, which was less than 1% of, of what we were making. Um, on the other hand, MongoHQ, which had not told us the right things and not, not told their other customers the right things, um, lost, I'm told, I, I don't know this from an official source, but I, I heard they lost half their revenue. Um, and so like, the, the, the distinction between the, uh, the you know, doing transparency well and, and, and doing transparency badly um, the, uh, the other thing that happened is, is of course, uh, you know, companies fundraise and, and they, they, they raise money from people and they have investors. Um, and we were two months from fundraising. And this large stain on our blog, uh, where, where we posted the incident, was a pretty scary thing. And even though we got through the incident without much loss, you know, there still, still could have been two months from having to shut the company down because we were out of cash. Uh, but fortunately, the investors talked to all the customers, and well, not all of them, but they, they talked to customers, um, and they, they looked at our blog, and they looked at our fairly professional response to, to the whole thing, uh, and they decided to give us a lot of money to keep the thing going. So that's the scary story of uh, Halloween five years ago, uh, the time we nearly lost our entire company, uh, and it all started uh, with the missing IM key. Thank you. Uh, yes, our, our hosted database provider, uh, which we did not have access to, told us that, that it, was, it was fixed. Um, it's, it's not the, the favorite way that we, would, uh, uh, that we would certify to ourselves that we were no longer compromised, but we did not have much choice in the matter. Yes, definitely. So, so one of them, um, and, and I, I talked about this in, 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 in the write-up, and, and it came up at the time, and I, I had it in the speech, but I somehow forgot to, to get through it, uh, is, is that we were not storing our... Uh, all those keys uh, encrypted at rest. So we should have had all of them, uh, it would have to be symmetrically encrypted, but it, it, if you accessed our database, you should not have been able to, to access those things. Uh, and that was like a big mistake that we made at the time. And we were, we were too old to be making that mistake. I think we were two years old at the time, and that was maybe a year and a half too long to really uh, have that problem and possibly even longer than that. The first thing is like we, we went through this uh, and we learned how, how it's supposed to be done, um, and, and that's, that's extremely valuable. Um, so the thing I'm going to do if this happens again is I'm going to do the exact script uh, that, that we did before. Um, I think one thing uh, as well is, is that there are now, uh, there's now more information about how, how this is done. 
Um, there, 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 there's a book, there's the, there's the SRE book, for example, that, that goes into detail about like incident response and, and that kind of thing. So there's, um, uh, there's that sort of thing. But there's, uh, I think basically, the the one takeaway that I have for this that that's going to affect everything that, that I do in the future is like making sure that we have utmost transparency, uh, and also to encrypt our keys at rest. Oh, thank you. <laughs>